John, the fact that the 10 year had so much of a reaction yesterday, does that mean that markets were caught a little bit off guard? Uh, possibly. I mean, it's been telegraphed for a while now that the Fed have been beginning to talk about the level of reserves that's appropriate, what that means potentially for the uh, balance sheet. But I think the market has been over-focusing on the um, Fed's rate policy and under-focusing on just how important the balance sheet is as a tool of monetary policy. And what we saw yesterday was the Fed really reconfirming that. We have ongoing um, programs within Europe, within Japan, within the UK of reinvestment at the long end of curves there and that's created a global bid for duration and the Fed has essentially signaled that they're rejoining that particular um, stock of demand. So as a result we think that this is an environment where we are seeing relatively muted growth around the globe probably trend like or slightly sub trend this year but with monetary policy easy and crucially with support at the back end of yield curves we think this is an environment where it's carry assets like credit like duration that will perform relatively strongly over the course of this year and I think what we've seen is that those thinking that the Fed's response was going to allow inflation to rise rapidly pushing up bond yields I think might have been caught a little bit off guard here uh, and have perhaps the calculus now is more about the supply demand in the 10 year and longer point of the curve than necessarily that uh, that nascent risk of inflation. Well, John, you mentioned duration. It was very interesting because Ellen Zetner of Morgan Stanley said the same thing. They are now favoring some of those duration and those credit assets. Where on the yield curve are you liking the duration? Is it 10 years out or are we looking at five years out? Well, I think, you know, if we look at where, where we are in the curve, I mean, the Fed said that they will, will begin to roll down their, their program. They'll be also be looking to replace their stock of mortgage-backed securities with Treasuries. But crucially, and this is the interesting point, they've noted that they will be matching the existing maturity profile. And that, for us, means that we, we will follow the playbook that we saw, I think, with when QE was in full flight, which is it's going to be the liquid, you know, belly of the curve, the 7 through 10-year point that, for us, is going to feel the impact most strongly. That's the liquid portion. So to our mind, that's the simple, clean-cut way to play this. John, I'm interested in your thoughts on the balance sheet because you attached the balance sheet to monetary policy. But I was listening to Jay Powell at the press conference yesterday and he was saying that they like to think of, you know, interest rates as their tool on monetary policy and, and keep the balance sheet separate. It was that kind of conversation that maybe spooked the markets back in November, December, wasn't it? But uh, so how linked are they? in reality or from an investor's perspective? I think it's hard to disentangle the two of them and to my mind you know the, the, the notion that you separate them is, is reasonable if I put a if I if I think for a moment from Jay Powell's perspective you know I imagine the the shorter higher frequency um, tuning that one can do with the front end of the curve with, with with forward guidance and with communications is clearly going to be the favored tool but ultimately the big leveler from a put certainly from a market volatility standpoint is going to be the back end of the curve and that's why I think you know while I understand his statement from a practitioner's point of view, it's very hard to disentangle them as being both very important tools, not just of near-term monetary policy, but also longer-term monetary intent.